Cubs a winner last night. They do it with a great start from Shota Imanaga. Some excellent defense from Christopher Morrell, who might be turning the corner at third base. I think the answer to that is yes. I'm not saying he's there, but last night in the sixth inning, he certainly was. Seiya Suzuki and Michael Bush going deep. Oh, yeah, and also Miguel Amaya. Now the Cubs look for the series victory today. Back of Javier Assad. We're going to talk about all that right here on the Cubs Baseball Channel. Make sure that you guys like and subscribe. Uh, hit the bell so you know when we're dropping new content. And let's talk a little Cubs baseball on this Sunday. Hey everybody, it's Mick Gillespie at the Cubs Baseball Channel, and it is great to talk to you guys on this Sunday. Glorious Sunday after a nice 4-1 to win by the Cubs last night, but a game that I think had a lot more significance than just a 4-1 to win on the road. They look for a series victory today. We're going to talk about that, and if they get that win, then uh, they'd have this road trip split right down the middle heading to Arizona. But Shota, I mean, how good has this guy been? Cubs paid him to come in and be an ace. A lot of us said, well, you know, maybe a number three or a number four starter. But when Justin Steele went down, Shota Imanaga really rose to the occasion. Five innings, five hits, a run, no earned runs. He got help in the sixth inning from Christopher Morrell. Morrell might have had his best game defensively at third base. A couple just unbelievable plays, a diving play, a leaping catch. We want the consistency out of Morrell, but it was nice seeing him backing up Shota and the pitching in the game last night. But I Imanaga has just adjusted. You remember that first game in spring training, gave up the home run to the Dodgers. Everybody was like, man, I just don't know. He's changed the way that he attacks hitters. The splitter's been so good for him. He's able to elevate pitches, drop them, change speeds, set up batters, and it's not like he's in there striking everyone out either. The stadium that the Mariners play in also seems to fit Imanaga's style as well, but uh, two walks and four strikeouts. He's now 2-0 and on the year with no earned runs allowed. Now, I've talked about this a lot, and I want to reiterate it, that the guys coming over from Japan now are legitimate stars. And I didn't feel like that was the case, uh, you know, 10 or 15 years ago. You had some really good players, but they were more outliers, you know, for every Ichiro. You know, there's like five or six other guys, maybe even more, that would come in and, and not really, uh, you know, not really star. Could be good players, but not really star. The game in Japan has just gotten better. Maybe our game's gotten a little bit worse. I, I don't really know what it is. But Seiya Suzuki and uh, Shota Imanaga, and you look around the league with some of the other Japanese players, like the best player in the game right now is Otani, right? You saw what Yamamoto could do when he faced the Cubs last week. He's going to be a great pitcher. Um, but Singa's great. I mean, like they they're coming in now from Japan and they're ready to be stars. And I think that is excellent for the game. And I've said this over and over again. I'll say it again. I love the way that Japanese players approach the game of baseball, the respect that they have for the game, the effort that they give, the fact that they just seem to come in and be great teammates. This is just something that is making the game more fun to watch. And the Cubs are lucky that they have two of the best players in the game that have come from Japan. And then you bring that market in as well. And you wonder if the Cubs will ever figure out a way to tap into the Japanese baseball market. But uh, Seiya Suzuki, home run yesterday, off to a great start. Three home runs, 13 runs batted in on the year. Uh, batting just about 300. Plays not the best defense, but he plays adequate defense and is, I think, the Cubs' best player right now. 
and he shined again with the long ball last night. Now, we talked about Christopher Morrell and that glove work in the sixth inning. And I'm going to say it. I'm starting to see Morrell make that change from being the worst defensive third baseman in baseball. I don't think that's a, a shot at him. I think that's just honesty to being someone that when he becomes more consistent, and what I mean is makes all the plays, all the routine plays. You saw it in that game last night that he has the ability to do amazing things because he's so athletic. Whether you're talking about leaping in the air and taking an extra base hit away or diving, he's got the arm. You know, Some people say, oh, it's confidence. I think that's part of it. But I think it's also technique. I think it's also getting used to making the throws, the angle that you need to have on the ball to get enough air on it to, you know, so you don't skip it past the first baseman or air mail it. A lot of that takes hard work and he's putting the hard work in and it's starting to show off. Now, look, am I saying that he's there? No, but I'm saying that you want to, at some point, start to see the light break through when a player is making a transition and has struggled in a position and I'm seeing it right now. Now that means he can make three errors next time he plays a uh, third today, maybe, you know, but that game, the last few games, he's just looked a lot more comfortable at third base. And I think that is a great thing for the Cubs. Michael Bush is solidifying himself as an everyday major leaguer. Still has work to do in his game. Um, defensively, has got to get a little bit better. Hadn't played first since college. Sometimes he, he, he's he been good. It hasn't been great. Sometimes he's been average. He's got to get better. That's going to happen. You can tell that he's got the ability to do that, the propensity to be comfortable at the bag. It just takes a lot of work. I, I can remember standing at first base and listening to uh, one of the Cubs catching coordinators, Mark Johnson, talk to one of the catchers who was playing first base just about catching throws from players on the diamond and how the ball moves out of each guy's hand and how, as a first baseman, you have to be prepared for that. You know, hey, Morrell may throw a ball that has, like, you know, kind of like a, a little bit of lift to it. And, you know, Nico may throw a ball that cuts, you know, every time he picks it up and throws it. And Dansby may throw a ball that does something else. You know, as a first baseman, every player that's on the diamond, you just have to know what to expect from them. It's going to make you better. There's so much learning that goes into it. Footwork, uh, be, being able to know when to come off the bag and catch the ball so it doesn't go by. You might not get an out. And when to stay on the bag. Uh, you know, we saw Anthony Rizzo, who I think was the best defensive first baseman the Cubs have had. And I know Derek Lee was good at first base, too. He's good defensively. I don't think he was as good as Rizzo because of Rizzo's uh, footwork. We all loved Mark Grace. But I like I like Michael Bush. I like the fact that the guys, you know, come over in this trade and you're starting to see some of the things that made him such a great player in a, in triple a right but he homered again three straight games with a home run um he he kind of i don't know i can't i guess he kind of reminds me of like a don mattingly type of guy but we'll see how that progresses another big game for him now uh if you guys missed it anthony jumped on the channel yesterday late and gave you an update on jameson tyone who we thought, and I think that the game plan was to get him up to around 100 pitches, then bring him to the big leagues. Now, that was before the Cubs had injury issues, right? That was spring training when they still had Justin Steele uh, and you know Kyle Hendricks hadn't um, struggled like he has. And you're trying to figure out how you're going to get innings out of your pitchers, right? So Tyone, this is his line that he had for Iowa a couple of the days ago, three and two thirds innings, three hits, no runs, a walk, four strikeouts. But the most important part of this is the uh, pitches thrown, 68 pitches, right? So he's going to join Arizona, the Cubs in Arizona, right? And they're going to figure out when 
his next outing is going to be, and that's going to be a start. So they could they could actually do like a sim game for him if they wanted to, just to kind of get that next start because you have a gap right now. 68, your next number would not be 100, right? You'd still be maybe like 80-something. So I'm guessing that they are kind of contemplating two things. Either we're going to go – 80 something with him in a start and know that, or, you know, maybe piggyback him with Kyle Hendricks or something. Right. Or we're going to do like a sim game or a bullpen game and he's going to throw the 80 pitches. And then the next time out, he's going to be ready to, uh, to hit that hundred. Right. So uh, that's kind of what they're going to decide when he gets to Arizona. A lot of you guys are saying, Hey, Tyone isn't a difference maker and we could care less whether he's ready or not. And I read the comments and I love the comments. Yeah. He's not a difference maker yet. Right. Last year, he, he, he really wasn't that good. He was consistently inconsistent, right? Had a couple great games, including the one in New York, which if he could just duplicate that every time, uh, like he did at Yankee stadium, I think the Cubs would be in great shape. And then there was like the game against the Tigers where he gave up a bunch of runs early. Uh, I, but it's important to, to have starting pitching right now. And it gives Craig council some options as far as like what they could possibly do to just try to piece together a staff. I mean, you're pretty deep right now in your options. So you got to get some of these guys back healthy. And what I'm hoping is that Tyone has a resurgence when he gets to the big leagues, coming back from the back injury that, you know, he had the stiff back during spring training. And um, we're going, Hey, this guy's really good. He was worth the money that the Cubs gave him a couple of years ago in free agency. Another thing that Anthony talked about is something that I wanted to address too. I saw Cole Franklin throw, of uh, a lot of games in in his uh career and he is a guy that I think all of us can say we really like not just as a, a prospect pitcher on the list a guy who when you take the position players out of the top 30 list you know he's one of the Cubs top 10 pitching prospects and maybe you could even put him up there in the top five you know depending on how much you like him or don't like him but he had a pretty bad blowout pitching for Iowa in his triple A debut yesterday. And, um, you know, thoughts and prayers go out to him. No, it's not life threatening, but it's a significant arm injury. You can tell by the way that he reacted when he threw the ball. You don't have to be a doctor. You don't have to be Nick Frangella to, to know that this guy's in a lot of trouble right now as far as his arm. And you figure it could be. Uh, anything from Tommy John surgery to, you know, some, some kind of other probably ligament or issue. I mean, we'll find out, but it doesn't look like it's going to be something that he comes back from anytime soon. And he's just got to work hard to get back to where he was because he was knocking on the door to getting to the major leagues. And it kind of reminds me of another guy who had this, uh, even more mediocre, or. uh, uh meteoric, less than mediocre, better, way better. Um, so bad choice of words there, but uh, this, this, this fast rise and then had an arm injury in uh, Robert Whitenack. I don't know if you guys remember him. He was a prospect that the Cubs had well years ago, but really good pitcher. And you just hope that you get back from the injury when you're knocking on the door to the major leagues and, and you get back there again. The good thing is that surgeries for arm injuries have gotten so much better, even shoulder injuries, you know, that it's um, something that these guys can bounce back from, but we're thinking about Cole. We really like him, And um, you know, and, and the other thing I wanted to say too, is some of you guys are going to go, well, it's the Cubs fault. Somehow it's the Cubs fault. Arm injuries are part of the game. And, and when you throw a projectile as hard as you can, right? <laughs> the whole thing you're trying to do is, get it past the guy that's at the plate with a bat, right? So you put spin on it, you know, obviously you change speeds with it and you're trying to use your whole body to lessen the impact on your arm when you throw it. 
And sometimes it happens perfectly and sometimes it doesn't. But the Cubs did not overuse Cole Franklin. So don't think that they actually are probably to me the opposite on that. I think that they should pitch their guys a little bit more. But arm injuries are why you worry every time you throw somebody out there that something could happen. And uh, you know, this is just the bad luck of pitching. So uh, as he comes back, we'll be pulling for him. And uh, and and hopefully, I mean, look, maybe they say, hey, you know, this isn't anything to worry about. And he goes back out there. I don't know. I've been around the game for, what, 20 years and as a professional and 40 years as a player. And I don't know that I've ever seen anyone react like that and it be something that you just – show up the next day and work through one of his teammates in Iowa is a guy named Jake Slaughter. And I think it's time that we put Jake Slaughter on the prospect list off to a great start this year, 353 average. Look at that on base percentage, 421 for Slaughter right now, a home run and three RBIs. He got a cup of coffee uh, for spring training, you know, saw him in there and did, did great. You know, put the ball in play, hits, you know, hit hit home runs. I mean, this guy has done everything possible to catch the attention of the Cubs front office. And I think that w- what we worry about sometimes is, well, this it doesn't look smooth, right? Like the way that he gets to the ball doesn't look as as smooth as some of the other guys. But the bottom line isn't how it looks. It's it matters on what you do with the ball and where you put it. And Jake Slaughter could be a great example of a guy who is unconventional and could be a star in, in the game. He was a football player growing up, could have played, you know, D1 collegiate football and, uh, and instead went baseball, comes from a very athletic family where he's got, you know, his dad played football, his, his uncle played football, um, I think his grandfather played football all the way into the NFL, and he's a great athlete. Saw him a couple of years ago in Tennessee. He runs the bases extremely well. There's times where you look at him, and because he's got the same build as Mike Trout, you kind of even see that with, uh, you know, the, the the running and the athletic part of it. He's off to a great start. And it doesn't surprise me. He has consistently put up great numbers everywhere he's been. Um, And even I can remember talking to a scout going, you don't even know, Mick, how much better he looks defensively. And that was two years ago. So I'm guessing that, you know, having, having not really watched him a whole lot, that he's gotten better and better. Athletes are like that. And you draft athletes like him and the Cubs did that twice. They took him twice. He signed the second time so that you can develop them. That's what they do. You know, like if, Hey, I'm not playing football anymore. I'm not playing basketball, just playing baseball and getting better at it. So the Cubs may have a diamond in the rough with Jake Slaughter, someone to keep on your radar and someone that I wanted to bring up today. Cubs finishing up their series against the Mariners. You don't have to stay up all night to watch it. Three ten central time, Cubs and Mariners, and I, I like the pitching matchup for the Cubs today with Javier Assad back out on the mound. He's kind of like the Jake Slaughter of pitching. They kept saying, oh, we need the, the, the velo, the, the spin rate, the da-da-da, and then he gets in there and he just gets the job done, right? So Assad 1-0, 164 ERA, not going to impress the analytics crowd, but he'll just go out there and give you a good six innings of pitching and a chance to win the, the baseball game, right? And then there's Luis Castillo. Everyone loves Luis Castillo. He does everything that the analytics crowd loves, right? The velo, the break, you know, the 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 shape of the pitches, the spin rate, right? He's 0-3 with a 689 ERA. So uh, I don't care how hard you threw ball for. Right. Isn't that what they put on the walls uh, around Arizona's uh, bullpens and spring training? Yeah. So this is I think this is a good matchup today for the Cubs. I, I've really enjoyed watching Javier Assad develop as a pitcher and now get to the big leagues. And eventually he's going to be a regular in the rotation. He's not going to be the sixth guy or the seventh guy. He's going to be one of the guys. 
And I think that his consistency and the fact that he gives you a chance to win each time he pitches is what you want from a starter in your rotation. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, if you disagree or you agree, get in the comment section. Let's talk about it. But a great win for the Cubs last night. Make sure you check out uh, Anthony's video from yesterday. He even had uh, uh, you know the video of Cole Franklin on the mound. You can take a look at that. And again, all of us thinking about Cole as he uh, deals with uh, what we consider a significant arm injury. All right. Uh, like, subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and we will talk to you guys again. If something breaks, maybe today, and if not, and uh, tomorrow when the Cubs take on the Diamondbacks with a little revenge on their minds. Go Cubs.